Okay, can you guys hear me? Hopefully the internet connection will stay strong by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, guys. <clears throat> First, last can't be on. It, it will rise when Jesus Christ returns to the earth. It's not going to rise before them. Chaldean and Assyrian. Can you guys hear me? Hopefully the internet connection will stay strong by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yahweh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Father, we love you. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. We praise you. Father, have mercy on us. Wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Bless this session, Father, in the power of the Holy Spirit, that the Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, will be glorified, magnified, praised, and that we will fall more passionately in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. Anoint my words, Father. <clears throat> Fill my lungs my chest and throat with the breath of life, the health I need to glorify you, Father, to glorify your Son, the Lord Jesus, and the power of your Holy Spirit, Father. Enable me to recall scriptures correctly and interpret them perfectly for the glory of Jesus. And bless the people here, Father. Fill us with wisdom and knowledge and understanding from your Spirit and power from your Holy Spirit to be passionately loved with you, <clears throat> passionately loved with Jesus Christ, passionately loved with your Spirit, and to live for you, Father. Save us from our flesh. Save us from the world. Save us from Satan. Cover us. With the blood of Jesus, cleanse us in the blood of Jesus, purify us in the holy blood of Jesus Christ, Father. Purify my children, our loved ones, in the blood of Jesus Christ, Father. Grant me clarity of thought and speech and save me from stammering, confusion, and error, Father. And save us from attacks of the enemy, from the children of Satan, from distracting us. Bless this session, Father, and have your way for your glory. We love you. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in Jesus' name. Yahweh. Amen. I need to learn. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get to see. We're we're now talking a little bit about Hatun Tash of DCCI Ministries. I know she was debating someone on the Spirit of Allah. I didn't get to watch it, but Aqua Vita did not. You said did not have the Muslim underlying presumptions of his claims. What do you mean? Maybe if you want to clarify. By the way, folks, first last couldn't join us, and I don't think Protestant believer could join us. So I'm going to have to do this on my own. I'm going to have to be reading the passages <clears throat> from the New World Translation of the Joe's Witnesses. So I won't be able to copy and paste. So I hope you don't mind that. Bear with me. Pray for me that we'll be anointed by the Spirit to glorify Jesus Christ. And the internet connection stays strong by the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ our Lord. So bear with me. Remember, I'm not in my own place. So whenever I have the home to myself, if the, the home is empty, that's when I try to get on. So right now it's empty. Last night I was on a little later, but now I have a window of several hours. So I want to take advantage of it <clears throat> as the Lord Jesus clears my throat in Jesus' name. Well, Walid, I'm going to be quoting from the Jehovah Witness Bible. So I don't know if you can post. Well, Medic, may the Holy Spirit refresh you and every one of us with life from his presence as we hear about the glory and beauty and majesty of Jesus Christ, who is our life. So don't be drained, be rejuvenated. Yeah, well, it's going to be from the New World Translation, so I don't know if you guys can quote. It's okay. Oh, thank you, Nada. God bless Hold on. Okay, hold on. Please, Lord. Connection. Yeah, Anna. Yeah, Maria. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Sorry, guys. Just finish. Thank you, sister. This precious sister in Jesus Christ. Thank you for blessing me, calling me handsome. I pray that the Lord Jesus will beatify me so that I do look handsome in the eyes of his servants, right? And use that to glorify Christ, that he saves me from my flesh and crucify my carnal desires in Jesus' name. For example, when he was con connecting spiritual with me. Yes, yeah, so aqua vita, but what was the argument? What's wrong with the spirit of truth being the spirit of Allah? Why would that be a problem? The spirit of truth being the spirit of Allah. I don't get it. What's up, sister? How are you? Right? I don't I don't get it anyway. All right, guys. <clears throat> Man, sooner than later in Jesus' name, we're gonna get a thousand. If CP can do it, David Wood can do it, so can I. Yeah. Vine, how are you, brother? 
We just started in Jesus' name. What I hope to accomplish in this session, here's what I want to accomplish in this session. I want to refute the gross misinterpretation of Jehovah's Witnesses regarding the Lord Jesus Christ being called the firstborn of God. In Hebrews 1, 6, the Lord Jesus Christ is identified as God's firstborn. And in Colossians 1, 15, Colossians 1, 15, there he is said to be the firstborn of all creation. I'm going to demonstrate that firstborn in reference to the Lord Jesus Christ does not mean he's the first creature of God, but it means that he is the one who is the heir of all creation, who holds preeminence, supremacy, because he is, he is supreme over all creation by virtue of the fact that he created all things, he sustains all things, and all creation exists for him. All right. I don't know. Is it working? Let me know if it's buffering. Sometimes my connection is not good. I don't know. Is it good? Sorry about that. This is the best we can do until I get my own place. Pray that by the end of December, I'll be in my own place in Jesus' name. I have to have a place by then. Okay? So when Jesus Christ our Lord is said to be the firstborn of all creation or God's firstborn, it does not mean the first one created. <clears throat> it means that he holds supremacy. He is preeminent. He holds the preeminence over all creation by virtue of the fact that he is the one who created all things, sustains all things, gives life to the entire creation, and everything exists for him. No, not, not in that context, Andrew. Nope, it's not as obvious as you think. What would firstborn, why would firstborn somehow connect with Mary when it's talking about God's firstborn and the firstborn of, of all creation? We're not talking about Luke 2, 7. By the way, is everything coming in clear, the sound clear? I know it's Psalm 23, it's buffering for him, but for the rest of you, okay? All right, let me know. And we're trusting by the grace of God, I'll stay strong. Okay, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you why the New World Translation is a diabolical, satanic perversion of God's scripture. You with me there? Why the New World Translation is a diabolical, satanic perversion of scripture produced with the main <clears throat> purpose of deceiving people from who the true God is and deceiving people from worshiping Jesus as Jehovah God Almighty. Are you ready? How you doing, Alan Rule? I'm going to give you a few examples. I'm going to compare the modern English version, which is modernized King James, with the New World Translation, particularly in passages that directly relate to the deity of Christ. Are you guys listening? Guys, I want to make sure I'm getting your attention, right? Everyone with me? I'm going to look at a few verses before I begin the discussion of firstborn. Firstborn. I'm going to show you passages that directly relate to the person of Jesus Christ and the work of Jesus Christ that you can tell have been deliberately mistranslated because the New World Translation is not an unbiased translation of God's Word. It was produced for the express purpose of indoctrinating, brainwashing Joe's witnesses from seeing who the true God is and recognizing Jesus for who he, who he truly is, God in the flesh, because it's diabolical, it's satanic. The organization is influenced by Satan, right? Whether directly or indirectly. You with me there? Let's look at a few. I'm going to compare modern English version, modern English version with the New World Translation. Modern English version is modernized King James. Okay. I'm going to start with John 10, 33. Okay. John 10, 33. Notice it says, the Jews answered him, Jesus, we are not stoning you for a good work, but for, you, for blasphemy because you being a man claim to be God, capital G. Claim to be God, capital G, okay? Watch here. That's modern English version. Now, notice how <clears throat> the New World Translation renders it. Here it is. Here it is in the New World Translation. 
Jesus reigns. Thank you. If you can post, go ahead. For although, for you, although being a man, make yourself a God, lower case G. Did you catch it? Now, if you're a Jehovah's Witness and you believe the New World Translation is an accurate translation of God's word, you're going to think that the Jews assumed that Jesus was making himself out to be a God, lowercase g. You see that? Pay attention. Notice the pattern. Tell me if it's a coincidence. Acts 20.28, 20, modern English version. Acts 20.28. 20, Therefore, the Apostle Paul speaking, Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to the entire flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Folks, did you catch it? God has blood. This passage clearly affirms the hypostatic union. This passage clearly affirms the hypostatic union, meaning that in the one person of Jesus Christ, there are two distinct natures, that Jesus possesses the nature of God and the nature of man. Praise God. Protestants here. Okay, thank you, Jesus reigns. He's here. He can take over. But now notice, God shed his blood, and it was by the blood of God that he purchased the church. This refers to Jesus being God in nature and human in nature, two distinct natures united in one person, right? You see it? Not if you're reading the New World Translation. Here's the New World Translation. To shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. That's modern English version. But now here is, here is the New World Translation. Pay attention here. Watch here. What's going on here? Come on, man. I keep getting the wrong one. Sorry. Hold on. Sorry, folks. Protestant believer, I'll let you take over in a minute. Okay, now watch here. Here is the New World Translation. Colin, everyone else, please don't post verses. It's okay. Thank you for helping me, brothers and sisters. New World Translation. The congregation of God, which he purchased with the blood of his own son. Do you see the difference? The blood of his own son. Number one, the word son is not in the Greek New Testament. The word son does not appear in the Greek manuscripts that even the Jehovah's Witnesses translate from. They inserted the word son to make it seem as if Paul was referring to God purchasing the church with the blood of Jesus, his son. But the word son, we use, we use is not in the Greek. You guys see that? Are you with me or am I putting you to sleep here? Come on, let's pray we get nearly 200. We want more people to learn. Vine, are you seeing the deliberate perversion of the word of God? Oh, my goodness. Hater Wood here. Hey, Hater, look, you got to start telling people to come to my channel, bro. It's not fair that they come and listen to you, a thousand people with nothing but heresies, indoctrination that makes Joe's witnesses look like choir boys. And I can only get about 70. Come on now. Come on, hater. Start advertising. It's not all about you, bro. Spotlight can't be on you. All right. Are you ready for the other examples? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, Medic for Christ. The other example did not have sun in it. The modern English version said, the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. The version that you're referring to is the Jehovah Witness Bible. So what version are you referring to, Medic? Modern English version, modernized King James, said the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. The word son is not in the Greek. Now, there are some translations that want to render it as the blood of his own son. Jesus reigns was not quoting modern English version or NIV, New International Version. Jesus reigns was quoting the Jehovah Witness Bible, Medic. Okay. There are specific versions that do insert the word son because they suggest it's implied. God willing, in the near future, I'll do a session on Acts 20, 28. God willing, in the near future, I'll do a session on Acts 20, 28. 
The word son, we use, that's a Greek word. I'm butchering the Greek pronunciation, obviously. We use, we use, is not in the Greek. It's to idiu, to idiu, right? To idiu, right? Which is literally of his own. Medic, pay attention. The Greek words are to idiu. To idiu means literally of his own. So the blood of his own, meaning his own blood. There you go. Groen just gave you the Greek. But now Groen did something beautiful. Groen gave you the rendering as found in the Byzantine textual tradition. The Byzantine textual tradition, which forms the majority of our Greek witnesses, actually read kuriu ke theu, kuriu ke theu, calling Jesus Lord and God, Lord and God. That's the majority reading, what's known as the Byzantine textual tradition, the Byzantine text type, which formed the majority of our Greek witnesses, doesn't read God. It reads Lord and God. Lord and God. Kuriu ke theu. It's right there. Kuriu ke theu. And it says dia, dia, through to idiu ematos. To idiu ematos. Through the his own blood. Pardon my butchering of the Greek. Did I confuse you guys? Or are you following with me? So I thank Growing for posting that. Thank this brother. Thank our brother in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because remember, being, I wish, Growing, coming from you is high praise because you speak Greek. Now, I keep pronouncing his name Growing. It's Growing right now. The reason why I thank him for posting it, because being Orthodox, the Orthodox Church they follow what's known as the Byzantine textual tradition. Do you guys know that? Oh, a sister? <laughs> I'm sorry, sister. I apologize. Growing is a sister in the Lord Jesus Christ. But you're from the Greek Orthodox, right? We got two wonderful sisters who love Jesus Christ from the Orthodox Church. Neda and Growing. Okay. But you do belong to the Greek Orthodox, right? I just want to make sure because I want to comment on that. Yes, okay. Now, do you guys know that the Greek Orthodox Church, I said, I said this yesterday, do not follow the Hebrew Masoretic textual tradition of the Old Testament. They don't follow what's known as the Masoretic textual tradition of the Old Testament. They follow the Greek version of, the Greek version of the Old Testament, which we call the Septuagint. Did you know that? Moreover, when it comes to the New Testament, they don't follow what's known as, well, again, they would, yeah, let me make it simple. The Greek Orthodox follows what's called the Byzantine textual tradition of the Greek New Testament. The Byzantine text type, also known as the majority text, which form the majority of our Greek witnesses. They don't follow what's commonly referred to by textual critics today as the Alexandrian textual tradition or Alexandrian text type, right? They follow the Byzantine text type, textual tradition. Are you with me here? Am I boring you guys? Or are you following with me? And by the way, I'm not claiming to be a scholar of textual tr criticism. I'm not. I'm a student. And hopefully I can be blessed by the Holy Spirit to increase my knowledge of the textual issues. But are you with me here? You understand that the Greek Orthodox Church, the Orthodox Churches follow what's known as the Byzantine text type. The majority text. <clears throat> When it comes to the New Testament, they follow what's known as the majority text of the Byzantine textual tradition, which forms the majority of our Greek witnesses of the New Testament. The reason why that's important is because... Oh, okay, sorry, I froze. The reason why that's important is because the Byzantine textual tradition in Acts 20:28 20, reads, Lord and God, Lord and God that it was Jesus 
our Lord and God that purchased the church with his own blood. Okay, now let's get back to the issue. Romans 9, 5. In the modern English version, modernized King James see, says, To whom belong the patriarchs, and from whom, according to the flesh, notice Jesus has two natures again, according to his flesh, his human nature, right? He's an Israelite. He comes from Israel. And from whom, according to the flesh, his human nature is Christ, who is overall God forever blessed. Amen. Did you catch it? Jesus again has two natures. Jesus again has two natures. In his human nature, according to his flesh, he's an Israelite. But then he has another nature which makes him supreme over all creation because in regards to that other nature, he is the God who's forever blessed. Amen. Do you guys see it? Jesus is the God who's forever blessed. And because he's God, he reigns supreme over all creation. But then he has a nature that's flesh, a nature that's human. And according to that human nature, according to his flesh, he's an Israelite. But now let's see how the Jehovah Witness render that passage. Watch here. Here's the Jehovah Witness perversion of Romans 9, 5. I hope I'm not boring you with this. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that you're being educated as the Holy Spirit saves me from error and guides me into all truth so that all of us will be guided into the truth of God. Now notice the Jehovah Witness rendering of Romans 9, 5. Notice the Jehovah Witness rendering of Romans 9, 5. And from them, the Christ descend according to the flesh, period. Full stop. God, who's over all, be praised forever. Amen. Did you see what they did with the Greek? Did you see what they did with the Greek? Instead of identifying Jesus as the God who is supreme over all, the God who's to be praised forever, they put a period before that sentence so that Jesus is not identified as God, but that God here is someone separate from Jesus. You see that? Before I move on, you see what they did? Folks, are you seeing a pattern? Are you seeing a pattern when it comes to Jesus Christ and their perverted Bible? Any passage which identifies Jesus as God Almighty in the flesh, they either translate in such a way where he's no longer described as God, but as a God, a lesser God, or interpret it where God and Christ are separated from one another. Are you seeing the pattern here? This one's really going to upset you. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9 in the modern English version, modernized King James. Therefore, God has highly exalted him. Therefore, God highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name. If you look at the Greek, it's clear. The Father bestowed on Jesus the status that is above every position and authority. The name which is above every name. Okay, that's what the Greek says. Now let's compare the New World Translation. The New World Translation of Joe's Witnesses, Philippians 2.9, watch here. And kindly gave him the name that is above every other name. Did you catch it? They inserted the word other again. So God didn't give Jesus the name above every name. He gave him the name that's above every other name. You catch it? They inserted the word other. <whistles> ah, but it's even worse than that. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Modern English version. Modernized King James. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Who is Jesus Christ? 
as we await the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow. Paul is explicit. Jesus Christ, when he appears, that will be the appearance of our great God and Savior. Our great God and Savior is Jesus Christ. Our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will soon appear. Ah, oh, but wait. Here is the New World Translation. The appearance of the great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh-oh. The appearance of the great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. You see what they did? They didn't translate it as our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, but the manifestation of the great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, in order to distinguish Jesus from being the great God. Do you see it? God willing, in future sessions, if the Holy Spirit gives me health, and the Holy Spirit gives me the holiness to delight his heart and provides for me, I'll go into the grammatical issues demonstrating that the Jehovah Witness Bible shamelessly perverted these passages. Okay? Hebrews 1.8, modern English version. Hebrews 1.8, modern English version. Let's see how it reads in the modern English version. Okay, Hebrews 1.8. Let's go there. But to the Son, he says, but to the Son, God the Father says this to the Son. But to the Son, he, God the Father says, your throne, O God, lasts forever and ever. Here, the author of Hebrews has the Father glorifying, praising, and honoring the Son as the God who rules forever. Now, you know what's beautiful about the Greek? In Greek, it says, your throne, ha theos. Your throne, the God. So the Father identifies Jesus as the God who rules forever, ha theos. Ah, but wait. Here's the New World Translation. But about the Son, he says, God is your throne forever and ever. God is your throne forever and ever. Wait, wait, wait. Did the Father say to Jesus, your throne, O God, is forever and ever? Or did the Father say to Jesus, God is your throne. Your throne is of God. I am your God who gives you authority to rule. Are you catching the pattern here? If they did it to one passage, we'll say, ah, coincidence. Two passages, yeah. But it's a repeated pattern. Repeated pattern that any and every passage that identifies Jesus Christ as God Almighty, God in an absolute sense, they manage to butcher the meaning of those passages. It's a repeated pattern. Final example, so we can go into firstborn. Final example. 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, 2 Peter 1.1, 1, modern English version. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who have received the faith as precious as ours through the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Peter, like Paul, identifies Jesus Christ as our God and Savior. Here it is, modern English version. Peter, who is Jesus? Peter says, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Jesus is our God and Savior. Our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not according to the New World Translation. Here it is. New World Translation. Through the righteousness of our God and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Through the righteousness of our God and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Did you see the repeated pattern of the Jehovah Witness Bible to pervert the meaning of these passages which directly identify Jesus Christ as God Almighty in the flesh? Now you tell me it's a coincidence. Is it a coincidence? 
Are you seeing the diabolical nature of this perversion? That it's satanic in its origin. So why would the society do that? Very easy to answer. In order to indoctrinate, brainwash, and mislead Jehovah's Witnesses from discovering the identity of Jesus Christ. Who he, who he truly is. Who he truly is. Right? So let me repeat why they did this. This is proof that this organization is influenced, guided by Satan and the kingdom of darkness. Because you see the diabolical nature of these perversions. It's not a coincidence that they pervert the passages that directly address who the true God is and identify Jesus for who he truly is, God in the flesh. Is that clear? It's not a coincidence. Vine and everyone else, you see? With that said, let's explain firstborn. If you're getting it, I want to now finish off by discussing what the term firstborn means in reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. What it means and what it doesn't mean. Let's look at Hebrews 1.6 in the Jehovah Witness Bible. Now, thank the Lord for our brother, Protestant believer. He was able to join us at last minute notice to help me to help you. Let's see Hebrews 1.6. Let's explain what the passage means and does it mean. Hebrews 1.6, the Lord Jesus is said to be God's firstborn. Okay. God's firstborn. Let's see. Hebrews 1.6, we're going to use the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove our position. But when he, when he again brings his firstborn into the inhabited earth, he says, let all of God's angels do obeisance to him. Now notice he's called the firstborn of God. God's firstborn. Let's go to Colossians 1.15. Colossians 1.15. Chapter 1, verse 15. Let's unpack it by the grace of the Spirit of our, of our God, Father, Son, and their eternal spirit. Colossians 1.15. Watch here. You just got to wait for the brother. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Now, here is the Jehovah's Witness objection. Folks, you really need to listen to my explanation because once you understand how to interpret this term in the context of the Bible, the Jehovah's Witnesses will not be able to misuse this passage ever again by the grace of God's Spirit working in and through you for the glory of Christ. Okay, here's their objection. Firstborn of all creation means Jesus is the first one God created. To be the firstborn of all creation means you're the first creature among the creatures that God made. You understand how they're interpreting the title? Firstborn of all creation means the first one created, made, and fashioned by God. You with me there? After all, when you speak of your firstborn, if I say my firstborn child, I mean the first child born to me. And then they're going to argue that if you're the firstborn, that means you came into being, you were brought into being, you were birthed into being, and you're not as old as your parent. You see the objection? Okay, now, I'm going to prove to you scripturally, exegetically, I'm going to prove to you scripturally, exegetically, by the grace of God's spirit, the connection to stay strong. Firstborn doesn't always mean the one born first. Firstborn doesn't always carry the definition of being brought into existence. The first one in a family that is brought into existence, into being, that has been birthed, right? I'm going to prove that to you. But before I do that, I'm going to use you. You who are parents, as an illustration. Vine, do you have children, Vine? Do 
Just want to. I'm going to use him as an example. Maybe he doesn't. I'll probably use someone else. Vine, do you have a do you have a child? Okay, I may use you, Glory, in a minute. Hold on. Let's see if he can answer. If not, then I'll use you. Gloria, <clears throat> how old is your firstborn? How old is your firstborn? Gloria, Vine, pay attention to this. 35, right? Pay attention to my question. Pay attention to my question. As a mother, how old are you? Vine, I want you to pay attention to this. I'm going to use her as an illustration. See, she didn't pay attention. No, you're not. Gloria, you don't listen well. As a mother, you're not 55 because you haven't been a mother for 55 years. So let's try this again. As a mother, how old are you? Okay. So are you older than your firstborn? Are you older than your firstborn? Thank you, Gloria. As a mother, you're just as old as your firstborn. Because without a child, you're not a mother. So as a mother, you're just as old as your firstborn. So if your firstborn is 35, you are 35 because you need the child to be a parent. Therefore, it is a lie when they tell you that your child cannot be as old as you. Your firstborn has to be as old as you for you to be a parent. Are you with me there? So you depend just as much uh, on your firstborn to be a parent as your firstborn depends on you. There's an interdependency between the parent and the firstborn. The parent and the firstborn. Without a child, you are not a parent. You are only a parent when you have a child, and it's your firstborn that makes you a parent, which is why the firstborn is special. So it is a lie from the pit of hell when someone tells you that your firstborn child isn't as old as you. Well, yes, as a person, you may be older, but not as a parent. A parent cannot be a parent without a firstborn child. Now, is God the Father a father in actuality? Has he always been the father? Or is he a father in potentiality? Meaning, he became a father, but he hasn't always been a father. Understand my logic before I go into the exegesis. You need to listen carefully or you're not going to get the point. Okay, let's try this again. Is God the Father the Father by nature? Or did he become a father? Is he a father in potentiality? Well, the answer is simple. God is the Father. The Father is God. He is the Father by nature. But wait. If God the Father is the Father by nature, that means he's always been a father. That means he doesn't need creation to be a father. Well, then how could he be an actual father before creation if he didn't have a son that existed with him before creation. Exactly. So then, the reason why Jesus is said to be the firstborn, it's not because he came into being. Because it just so happens he is the oldest son of God because he's the son that makes God the father. And since God has always been the father, Jesus has always been the son and therefore has always been the firstborn. Sinking in? The reason why Jesus is the firstborn son is because he's the one. What happened here? Oops. Lost connection. Can you guys see me? Or can you hear me? Uh, okay, sorry. Okay, all right. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Okay. The reason why Jesus is the firstborn, because he's the one that ha that makes God the Father. But since God has always been the Father, he's always existed with his firstborn. 
So the term firstborn doesn't imply that Jesus came into being. The term firstborn implies he's the son that made God the father, made the father who he is, namely a father. But since the father has always been the father, the firstborn has always existed. Right? He is firstborn in terms of the fact he's the one that makes God the father. But since God has always been the father and doesn't need creation to be the father, he's always had his firstborn, which is why he's always been the father, because there was someone that he was a father to in eternity before creation. Is that clear? Sorry, my neck is stiff. Did I lose anyone? Or did you understand it? Firstborn, not in terms of being brought into being, young Moses. Firstborn in terms of the one who makes his parent a parent. Just like Gloria only became a mother when her firstborn was born. So her firstborn makes her a mother. But since Gloria doesn't have to be a mother, in other words, human beings do not need to be parents in order to be human. Human beings can go on living as human beings without children. But God the Father is the Father by nature. He's not simply someone that became a father, so that fatherhood is something potentially in him. He's actually the Father. But for him to be the father in actuality and not need creation to be the father because God doesn't need creation to be who he is. He doesn't need creation to be all that he is, right? He must have been a father to someone in eternity before creation. And he was the father to his firstborn, his firstborn always existing with him. I don't know if it's making sense or I confuse you guys. Thank you, Colin Marshall. Fatherhood is one of his e eternal qualities. He's not a father in potentiality. He's the father in actuality. But how can he be the father in actuality and not need creation to be a father? Because of the firstborn son. Right? Right? Vine, are you getting it? Before I move on? Just want to make sure. Let me show you that God's fatherhood, fatherhood is tied in with the sonship of Christ. He is the father because Jesus is the son. No Jesus, no father. Let me repeat it again. God's fatherhood is tied in with Jesus' sonship. He is the father because Jesus is the son. No Jesus, no fatherhood. Let me prove that to you. First John 2, 22 to 23. Yep, young Moses, you got it. But even without us, he'd still be the firstborn. For example, young Moses, if you had an only child, that only child would be your firstborn and only child. So if there was no creation, Jesus would still be the firstborn. And also the only child. Right? Okay. First John 2, 22 to 23. First John 2, 22 to 23. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. Everyone who denies the Son does not have the Father either. But whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. You see, Jesus' sonship is bound up, tied in with God's fatherhood. You can't have one without the other. To deny the one is to deny the other. Are you catching it? Are you catching it? You can't have one without the other 
To deny one is to deny the other. To affirm one is to affirm the other. That's what 1 John 2, 22, 23 just told you. He tied in the Father of God with the Sonship of Christ. You deny the Son, you deny the Father. So Jesus is the firstborn, not because he's the one that was brought into being birthed by God. He's the firstborn because he is the one that makes God what he is, the Father. God is the Father, and it's Jesus who makes him what he is. So he's not simply a father in potentiality. He's the father in actuality. Before I move on to the next point. Das, only someone stupid would think that to be a male means you have to be physical. I'm going to give you a chance and think about that a little more deeply. And I'm going to assume you're asking me a sincere question, not trying to debate. Because if you debate, I'm going to decimate you. Who told you that fatherhood can only be something, or I should say maleness, is bound with physicality? What stupid moron told you that? Who told you that maleness is something that can only exist among physical beings so that maleness is tied in with physicality? Which stupid person told you that so I can smack him for you? No, Dilla John, you can still have the father being Lord in that he can exercise authority over the son. So in a sense, even in eternity, the father is Lord because he's Lord of the son, because the son is subject to him. Let's keep it simple, Dilajan. Let's focus on the father and the son relationship. Okay. Now, coming back to the issue, if I made it clear that the firstborn doesn't come later in time from the parent. Let me repeat again. A firstborn child does not come later in time. To, well, hold on, hold on. Let, let me catch what you just said, Dilajan, because I think I'm going to have to explain your own logic to you. Here's what you said. Why we call Lord of hosts a father? Because he has a son or we could uh, uh, call him just creator. So either you didn't ask your question right or I'm answering the question as you typed it. So if that's not what you're saying, learn how to ask your question better, Dilajan. Don't debate me because you just asked, is he Lord of hosts because of Jesus or because we can call him creator? So I'm just going by what you wrote, friend. But let's focus, Dilajan, because I love you, and I love you enough to bounce you. So I'm an equal opportunist. I hate to love, and I love to hate. Focus in Jesus' name. Okay. Let me repeat this point again so we can go into the exegesis of firstborn. As the Holy Spirit loosens my tongue, saves me from error, grants me clarity of speech, and blesses you with wisdom and knowledge to understand these issues for the glory of the triune God. It is not true that a firstborn comes later in time from the parent because without the firstborn there is no parent let me repeat it is not true that a firstborn child is later in time from the parent because without the firstborn there is no parent there is no parent you with me there Before I move on, you with me there? So don't buy into this logic that says a firstborn child is later in time. No, you can't have a firstborn child coming later in time without this implying that the one who gave birth to him, right, <clears throat> prior to the birth of the child, Always existed as a parent. That doesn't happen. Without the firstborn child, you're not a parent. That doesn't happen. So don't buy into it. See, firstborn child is always later in time. No, a firstborn child cannot be later in time from the parent because until that child is born, that person isn't a parent. I 
I have no idea what you're talking about, Christian grape juice, because once a woman conceives, that child in the womb, unless it's stillborn or she you know, miscarries, the conception, at the moment of conception, that woman is a parent. That's why even if it's stillborn, she still considers that child to be her child, even if it's stillborn or if she miscarries. Are you with me there? Is it clear? Does I'm, is my logic irrefutable? Even on the human plane, the temporal plane, it is not true that a firstborn comes later from a parent because up until the birth of the firstborn, that person isn't a parent. The firstborn is as old as the parent. The parent is as old as the firstborn. That's just basic common sense, folks. And I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to articulate it in a manner that makes sense to every one of you for the glory of Jesus. So again, Jesus is not called firstborn because he was brought into being later in time. It's his status in relationship to the Father showing that's the one that makes God the Father. God is the Father because Jesus is his son. The Father is the Father because of his firstborn. Who is his firstborn? Jesus Christ. But if the Father has been the Father eternally, then he can only be such if he had a son that he's been a father to in eternity. Cl clear? Well, medic, then that's his problem. Then he's going to have to explain to you, at one point in time, did God become the father? Now, if medic, he tells you, well, he became the father when he created the son, so you have a problem. The Bible shows the son isn't created. He's eternal and uncreated. So at one point in time, did God become the father? He's always been the father because the son has always existed. Medic, that backfires against them. If a Jehovah Witness tells me, well, he became the father when he created the son. Who told you he created the son? The Bible is clear that the son was there before creation in eternity. So at no point in time did the son come into existence. Therefore, at no point in time was the father not the father. You with me there, Medic? Is that making sense? Can I because I'm ready now to explain what firstborn means and does it mean? I'm ready to explain what firstborn means and doesn't mean. Are we ready? Did I confuse you on firstborn and a parent isn't a parent until you have a firstborn? Send this dog on his way, Dawn of the Rainbow. So you got these wicked, filthy dogs who foam. Send them on their merry way. Clear or do we have people confused? No, you can't point to text where God the Father is said to be the eternal father because God the Father is never called eternal father daily, right? The son is. And that's misinterpreting the phrase abiyad. Okay, now let's go into the meaning of firstborn. We ready? Come on now. We ready? By the grace of the trying God, we ready? All right. The term firstborn can have three meanings according to the scriptures. The scriptures show us that the term firstborn can have three meanings. Are you ready for the three meanings? It can mean the one born first. The one born first. It can also mean the heir, because if you're the firstborn, you're the heir. The firstborn is the heir of the estate, the heir of his father, right? And it can also mean the one who's preeminent, because if you're the firstborn, then you hold 
the preeminent position over the rest of the family members. So let me repeat. Firstborn can mean the one born first, the heir, and the one who's preeminent. So if you're the firstborn of your household, you're the heir automatically, and all the siblings are subject to you, you are preeminent over them. You with me there? Do you see what the three definitions of firstborn happens to be according to Scripture? The one born first, the heir, and the one who's preeminent holds supreme position over the rest of the family members. Because according to the Bible, if you're the firstborn, you're the heir. And as a sign that you're the heir, you get a double portion of your father's estate inheritance. Deuteronomy 21, 15 to 17. Deuteronomy 21, 15 to 17. Yeah, H-E-I-R, air. H-E-I-R, air. Deuteronomy 21, 10, uh, 15 to 17. Deuteronomy 21, 15 to 17. No, Andy Shannon, you're actually wrong. It does mean one's offspring. Jesus is the true offspring of the Father, and that was the language of the early church fathers. The early church fathers did not shy away from saying Jesus is the true offspring of God because, again, you're assuming an offspring has to be physical. Stop imposing your physicality on these terms. Deuteronomy 21, 15 to 17. In fact, this is where the Orthodox and the Catholics have a number on you because they do read the church fathers and they do look to the church fathers. They will tell you that the church fathers, like Justin Martyr, second century apologist, and Athanasius called Jesus the true offspring of God. Okay? Growing just confirmed it. So, Andy, do me a favor. Don't pontificate and think you know what you're talking about. Jesus is the offspring of God because to be an offspring, you don't have to be physical necessarily or brought into being through sexual intercourse. Stop thinking like a Mormon or a Muslim. Right. See, Ad Adam Kadmon is Catholic. Did you notice the Catholics and the Orthodox amen me? Do you know why they amen me? Because the church father said Jesus is the offspring of God and used the term offspring. Because they knew what they meant by the term. No, it's not different. That's all. He is the offspring of God. But because you're thinking in temporal, physical terms and imposing your temporality and physicality on these terms, you're confused. You're thinking like Muhammad and the repent. Is that clear? Jesus is the true offspring of God. Because you can be a true offspring and not be physical or temporal. Because who is the true father? God or human creatures? God defines true fatherhood. But God is not a physical being. God is a spiritual being. So if God defines what fatherhood truly is, then Jesus defines what offspring truly is. And they tell you that true fatherhood and true offspring, not physical, but spiritual in nature. The physicality is a shadow of that which is real. Clear? Is everyone with me there? What came first? The fatherhood of God or the fatherhood of human creatures or creatures? 
What came first, the, the sonship of Christ or the filial relations and creation? So then, who defines, determines fatherhood and offspring? God or creatures bound to time, space, and place, temporal, physical, finite beings? That's why the church fathers saw things that we don't see today because they understood Jesus defines offspring and sonship. God defines fatherhood. So they could say Jesus is the true offspring of God, born of his essence eternally, because to be an offspring, you don't have to necessarily be physical or temporal or finite. No, it's a channel refuting Joe's witnesses and showing their doctrines of the devil. Did you catch what Orthodox believer did? Even with good intentions, good intentions, because we love our sister Atun. We're talking about Joe's witnesses refuting them. Orthodox believer talks about Hatun getting punched by a Muslim to detract us. See, even good intentions can be used of the devil to distract. Everyone want me here so far? Everyone with me? Do you understand? Jesus is the offspring of God. Because who said to be an offspring, you must be physical, temporal, and finite? Where did you get that from? It's like my response to the other guy, that idiot. Why is God male? Who told you maleness is defined? by physicality, temporality. You understand what I'm trying to teach you? God is the definition of these things because he's the reality of these things. So if God is said to be father, then that means maleness is not something bound to physicality or genitalia because God the father is spirit and he is truly the father without being physical, right? Without having genitalia. So fatherhood, is bound with maleness, then being male doesn't imply that you have to be physical necessarily or have genitalia. Are you with me there? Are you learning? This is why it takes me more than one session. And Vine, I hope everyone else is learning this. Do not fall for the lie that maleness is defined by physicality, temporality by finite beings. That if you're male, you have to be physical with a set of genitalia. That's a lie from the pit of hell because if God is father by nature, and if fatherhood is a male thing, that means God the Father is male without being physical, without having genitalia. Learn to think God's thoughts after him. Let the Bible define these terms, not your tradition, not the world, right? Yes, God is male. Because, guys, let me tell you what you're setting yourself up for. If you're telling me that God is not the Father by nature, but that's something he assumed to communicate to us, as some theologians say. God is genderless. Who told you that? Who told you God is genderless? Because if you buy into that tradition, listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. If you buy into that logic that God is genderless beyond gender, then what you're saying is that when God says he's a father, he's not really a father, but he adopts that language in order to communicate to that particular culture. So if that culture is patriarchal, a patriarchal society, to that culture, he'll reveal himself as father. 
But if he's going to reveal himself to a matriarchal society, to that culture, he'll call himself mother. So did God really give up his only son? Or is that simply convenient language he uses to communicate to a patriarchal society? But if he was speaking to people in India that are matriarchal, then John 3.16 would actually say, for the goddess so loved the world that she gave her only begotten daughter. Really? That's the route you want to go? Is that the route you want to go? Moreover, who made Israel a patriarchal society where the male is the head? Who made? God did. The first human created, male or female? Male. So the God of the Bible created patriarchal societies. It's not something that he condescended to. It's something that he created from the start. So please do not buy the liberal baloney BS that God is genderless and God only says that he's a father to communicate to a particular group. But if he was speaking to a group that was matriarchal, then we'd expect him to say, for the God is so loved the world, he ga she gave, I'm sorry, she gave. Her only begotten daughter. Really, guys? Really? What am I trying to get at? Here's what I'm trying to get at. Whether you like it or not, God is the Father and the Son is the Son. God didn't simply speak as if he's the Father. Because he was dealing with a, matriarch, a patriarchal society. So that if he was speaking to a matriarchal society where the woman are, uh, is the head, he then would shift from saying he's the father to her saying she's the mother. And that Jesus would shift from saying he's the son to her saying she's the daughter. Everyone with me there? Now, we're not talking about Adam. The term Adam is generic because in that same passage, Zena and Riaz, it says male and female, he created them, distinguishing the genders. He used the term male and female, the Hebrew terms for maleness and femaleness. Yes, all throughout the Old Testament, he's called father, young Moses. Yes. Here, Isaiah 63, 16. Let's look at it. Isaiah 63, 16. Yes, he's the father before creator because he's the father to the son. And the son is not created, Dilajan. I don't know what you're talking about, Mrs. Wendy. The only reason why you're a child of God is because of Jesus being the son. God is allowing you to share in the sonship of Christ. For you are our father, although Abraham may not know us and Israel may not recognize us. You, O Jehovah, our, our father, our repurchaser of long ago is your name. Isaiah 64, verse 8. Isaiah 64, verse 8. Good, good answer, uh, Andrew. Isaiah 64, verse 8. Guys, before you pontificate, just listen and learn before you pontificate because I don't want to correct <clears throat> errors. But now, O Jehovah, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Psalm 89, 26. Psalm 89, 26. Psalm 89, 26. Watch here. Psalm 89, 26.
See again, Mrs. Wendy, this is where I'm going to block you. You ignored everything I said. Who told you that in order for you to be a true son, it has to be biological? Send Mrs. Wendy on her way. She completely did not understand anything I said. Psalm 89, 26. He will call out to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Did you catch it? David will say to God, you are my father. I just spent 10 minutes and she just proved my point. You see the stupidity? Did you guys catch the stupidity? Well, if Jesus is not the biological son, then it's metaphorical. You see again what's happening? You're using your frame of reference, your experience, your reality to determine the meaning of words as opposed to allowing God, who is the ultimate reality, tell you the true meaning of words. You, you see what's happening, Vi, and everyone else? You see what you're learning and unlearning? You are not the ultimate reference point. Your frame of reality, your experience of reality, doesn't determine ultimate truth or ultimate meaning. God, whose reality defines these terms. You and me there? Everyone sink in because you're silent. She just did what I said should not be done. You are using your frame of reference, right? Your experience of reality to define terms. It is God who is reality, and he is the definition, the meaning of these terms. He provides the definition of the true meaning of these terms, not you. Clear? You see, it takes me much longer than usual to make a point. Even though I always assume that when I start my session, I'll be able to finish a point in one session. You see, I never finish a point in one session, right? Do you see why I never finish a point in one session? Because I have to do a lot of explaining, a lot of <clears throat> groundwork, laying the foundation, and also destroy a lot of myths and traditions. No, Tizdi, don't tell me what to do, Tizdi. Please don't tell me what to do on my channel. If you want to stay here long, do not tell me what to do, please. You with me there? You understand why I'm not able to finish any particular point in one, in one session? Because you see how much tradition has affected our understanding of the Bible. And you see why, by the grace of God's Spirit, I have to do a lot of groundwork, laying the foundation, a lot of redefining terms and destroying traditions for us to then see the Bible clearly by the grace of God's Spirit, to see it the way the Spirit wants all of us to see it? No, no. Don't be confused. Zero one. What you're learning right now is that God is the ultimate reality, the ultimate meaning of the terms we use. In other words, when you think of male, zero one, you think of a physical body with genitalia. And I'm saying, stop thinking that way. God defines maleness, femaleness. God defines fatherhood. In other words, if you want to know what maleness is, go to God, go to the source, and he'll tell you what it is and what it isn't. Orthodox believer, I've given permission. I'm going to give permission again. Download all my videos, all my discussions, all my articles, even make snippets, pass them on for the glory of God, but don't sell them and don't edit them to make me say something I didn't say. Nothing but the truth. Don't ask me that question and have me change subjects. Please, don't ask me that. Okay. So zero one, must Jesus be the biological son of God, meaning that God had to sire him physically 
for him to be truly the son of God and God's true offspring. What's the answer? Let's see if you're getting it now. What's the answer? Come on, guys. I don't want to waste time. What's the answer? Must Jesus be Dilijan? You're not listening? What were you doing then? Were you pretending to be in the channel listening? Disrespect me by pretending to listen when you're not? No, it's not okay, Dilijan. No, it's not, brother. In fact, because of that mark, that's not it's not a mark. Okay, buddy. I love you, man. Don't take this personally, bro. I love you, bro. All right. Must Jesus be the biological offspring of God? Did God have to sire Jesus physically for him to be the true offspring of God, the true son of God? No, the Holy Spirit of God did not make a son of God. Please, Khalil Bakhlam Zimbastushme. Okay, so what's my point? If someone tells you, how can Jesus be the son of God without God biologically siring him? Notice what he or she is doing. Using his reference point, his frame of reference, his experience of reality to determine the meanings of these terms. You, you see the point? No, God is the ultimate reference point. He is reality. He tells us what an offspring is and isn't. Nothing but the truth. Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. I just told nothing but the truth. Don't ask me that question because I'm going to go off topic. And I've answered that question in previous sessions. Pins and needles, needles and pins. A happy man is a man that grins. So why is nothing but the truth asking me the same question to get me off topic? Take care, Edmund Kadman. Okay. Everyone with me here? Even though I just said, don't ask me that question so I don't get off topic. Let's focus here. Okay, did everything make sense? Because I didn't even go into firstborn. Okay. I didn't even get into firstborn. Every Everyone with me here? Do you see Vine and Andrew everyone else why I get tired? Because remember, I'm an imperfect fallen human being, and I do get tired, and this stuff wears me out. It really does. Because I think I'm going to get in, knock it out, and then I have to do all this groundwork laying the foundation, right? Destroying myths and traditions and misunderstandings, decimating traditions of men before I can get to the point. Thank you, Lisa. This is the second person who called me handsome today. What's, <laughs> what's, what's going on today? Praise Jesus. That's my prayer. Go, Lord, make me a holy slave and a handsome slave of Jesus. Be out of with the beauty of Christ. All right? Okay, so I got three people telling me I'm handsome. And, you know, I've been praying. I said, Lord Jesus, make me a holy slave of Jesus and a handsome slave of Jesus. Beautify me with beauty of, beauty of Christ. So when people see me, they will see a handsome face and delight because of the beauty of Jesus shining through me. I got three witnesses. The Lord is answering my prayer. Thank you, guys. You just confirm God is answering my prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Uh, honestly, thank you. Don't hate Sai Christian. Right. Anyway, everyone with me so far? Everyone with me so far? Let me repeat the main point. You don't have to be a physical being with genital genitalia to be male. Okay, let's try it again. You don't have to be a physical be being with genital to be male. You don't have to be a physical being with genitalia.
to be a father. You don't have to be a physical being who is biologically sired to be a true offspring. God is father. Jesus is the true offspring of God the father. But neither of them are physical by nature and have genitalia. Right? So is God the Father male? Yes, but he's not physical. He doesn't have genitalia. Is Jesus the eternal son? Yes. And as the eternal son, doesn't the word sonship imply maleness? Yes, but he's not a physical being, being who has genitalia in eternity. He became flesh and as man, part of his human nature as a physical body, right? Now, let me extend it to the angels. Gabriel, angel Gabriel, it's not Gabriella. Angel Gabriel. Not Gabriella. So is this spirit creature, Gabriel, male? Yes, but he's not a physical being with physical genitalia. Is it the Archangel Michael or the Archangel Michelle? Archangel Michael or Michelle? Michael, last time I checked, Michael is male. So this Archangel, a spirit creature, is male but doesn't have physical genitalia. I would assume there are female angels, Riaz. I would assume, but it's not explicit. There's only one passage in scripture that talks about spirit creatures that are female. Zina and Riaz, there's one passage of scripture that talks about spirit creatures that are females. But someone can say it is metaphorical not actual Zechariah chapter 5 let's read 9 to 11 Zechariah 5 9 to 11 but Irene they still have maleness in heaven Gabriel and Michael that's my point but they don't procreate right Zechariah 5 verses 9 to 11 Let's see. Let's read. Then I looked up and saw two women coming forward, forward, and they were soaking in the wind. They had wings like the wings of a stork, and they lifted up the container between the earth and heaven. Two women. So I asked Angel, who was speaking with me, where are they taking the Ifa container? And he replied to the land of Shinar to build her a house. When it is prepared, she will be deposited there in her proper place. Two women flying with the winds under their wings, and they had the wings of storks. And a stork is an unclean animal, by the way. So this is the only explicit reference to female spirit creatures who fly that have wings. So... Am I on good grounds to assume there are female angels? Yes. Do I have anything explicit besides Zechariah 5 9? No. Can someone allegorize it? Yes. But oftentimes you'll have visions and dreams in which something is allegorical, not literal, but within that allegorical description, you do find spirit creatures that are not me merely allegories. Are you with me there? In other words, don't assume you know more about heaven than you really do. And don't pontificate and tell people what can and cannot exist in heaven, because apart from a relation, how in the world do you know? How do you know? How do you know there aren't female angels? The Bible doesn't say there isn't. Why would we assume that there are spirits that cannot be touched when angels touch and are touched all throughout the Bible? You and me there? 
Is it clear or am I confusing you guys? Because I'm tired for you. Did I get you guys tired with this or are you guys still trucking with me? Because you know I'm going to have to do a part two on Firstborn, right? You know I'm going to have to do a part two on Firstborn, right? It's already 85 minutes into the discussion. No, that's not why wisdom is referred to as she. You're asking me another question that's going to until I go into a rabbit trail. No, that's not it. That's personification. Okay, let me explain Ogdance's question. In the book, book of Proverbs, especially chapter 8, wisdom is described as a woman, a female, a female, a woman. Exactly, Vine. Okay. Do you know why? Do you know why in the book of Proverbs, especially chapter 8, wisdom is described as a woman, that she's a woman? Do you know why? Focus, Lisa. Do you know why? Why would Proverbs describe wisdom as a woman? Yeah, because women are the brains. Yeah. No. No, not because of Eve. Because the word in Hebrew, hakma, is feminine in gender. In Hebrew and Greek, nouns often have gender. It's either feminine or masculine. Now, in Greek, you have the neuter. Hakma is feminine. Because it's feminine, if you want to personify it, if you want to take wisdom and describe wisdom as a person, if the word is feminine in gender, are you going to describe wisdom as a man or a woman? Now, again, let me repeat. The word wisdom in Hebrew, chokmah. Some would say chokmah. It's feminine in gender. If I want to personify it, what is personification? Personification is taking something that's inanimate, not conscious, and describing it as if it's a person. So if I want to personify wisdom, wisdom is an attribute. If I'm going to personify it, if the noun for wisdom is feminine, it doesn't make sense that I describe wisdom as a male or a man if it's feminine in gender. Right? So if Solomon wants to personify wisdom in Hebrew, if Solomon wants to personify wisdom, God's attribute wisdom, and describe God's attribute as a person, how would he personify wisdom, knowing that in Hebrew, wisdom, the word for it in Hebrew, chakma, is feminine? Would he personify it as a man or as a woman? Woman, right? Feminine, right? That's why wisdom in Proverbs speaks as if she's a woman. But the wisdom in Proverbs 8, it's God's attribute. It's talking about God's eternal wisdom. Last time I checked, God's attributes are not persons. So he's taking the attribute of God, wisdom, personifying it in order to make a point. But since the Hebrew word for wisdom is feminine, not masculine, it only makes sense he's going to describe wisdom as a woman. By the, by, by the way, do you know that one of Jesus' names is Sophia? One of the names of Jesus is Sophia. And did you know Sophia is a Greek word and it's feminine in gender? The word Sophia is a Greek word that's feminine in gender. And that's one of his names. Jesus' name is Sophia. Exactly growing. I love you, sister, because you know Greek. 1 Corinthians 1.24, Jesus is called Sophia of God. 1 Corinthians 1.24, Jesus is called Sophia of God because the word Sophia is the word wisdom. 1 Corinthians 1.24. Post it and let me get you the link. Boy, am I tired. I'm fried. I really am. Sometimes I feel like I'm going to check out.
And it's better for me to check out to be with Jesus because I'd rather be with Jesus in heaven, perfect, glorified, seeing his face, kissing his feet, seeing that blessed company than on earth. But if God is pleased to keep me around, I would just love one thing, to see my daughters grow up to be godly women and in love with Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1, 24. Here, read this. However, to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Folks, do you know what the word wisdom is in Greek? Sophia. So here, Christ is said to be the Sophia of God. The Sophia of God. Did you know that? Let me show you the Greek, because I know you're skeptics. You don't believe me. Here you go. So did you know that one of Jesus' name is Sophia? So anytime you, you name your daughter Sophia, you're giving her the name of Christ in the Greek New Testament. Here you go. What's the word was, was wisdom there in Greek? Here you go. Don't take my word for it, you skeptics. Here you go. Here's the link, biblehub.com. Can you guys click on it, see if I'm lying to you? Here's what it says in Greek. Christon theou. Now I'm doing the Erasmian butchering of Greek. Christon theou. Dunamin ke theou sophien. Sophien. Sophien is the accusative of Sophia. Jesus is called the Sophia of God. His name is Sophia. Wow. Sophia. Did you see that the blessed name of your Lord and Savior is Sophia? But Sophia is feminine, folks. Does that mean Jesus is a woman? No. Agape means love. Phileo means love. Sophia means wisdom. Now, in Greek, Sophia is feminine in gender. It's a feminine noun. But Jesus is Sophia. Does that make him female? No. It just so happens that the noun is feminine in gender, but Jesus is masculine. Yep, Sophian is the accusative form of Sophia. So here you have a male, a masculine figure, with a feminine name. Jesus is male, he's masculine, and yet he's given a female name. He is the Sophia of God. You with me there? Making sense? Making sense? So are you praying for me that God will keep filling me with wisdom, knowledge, insight, and scriptures so that the Holy Spirit blows all our minds away with the depth and beauty and majesty of the scriptures? I'm sure this blew all of you away, right? Okay, now let me show you something else. Hold on, hold on. Go to Luke eleven forty nine. Luke eleven forty nine. Thank you, Irene. Boy, I can use a godly woman if it's his will. It's very hard without my daughters. Irene, by way of confession, when I had my daughters, I didn't care. I didn't want anyone. But I don't even have them, and it's become so lonely without my children. My two angels. My nine-year-olds, uh, I ache for them every day. Only the Lord Jesus knows how much I ache for them. I may not show it. You may not see it. But there's not a day I don't wake up where I don't have this heaviness in my heart. And I just sit there thinking of them, missing their voice. God knows how much I love them. Honestly. You with, you are parents, you know. I ache for them. And I can't wait. In fact, uh, I, I don't know what I'll do if I see them. I'll probably start bawling. I'll break down and start crying like a baby. All right? But one thing I can tell you, can I say this by way of confession? All right? Can I? Hold on.
Sorry, it's buffering here. Okay, sorry, it's buffering. Can I sh share something with you? Can I share something from my heart? And I mean this. And yet I fail him because of my fleshly desires that I succumb to. May God save me from it. Can I say from my heart, I mean this. I've never been more in love with Jesus. I can say this and it's moving me to my heart. <clears throat> I'm in love with him. And I'm not just saying in front of you. I mean this from my heart. I'm in love with my Lord because I sense how much he loves me. You guys who are born of the spirit, you know what I'm saying? Because you can't describe it in words. You really can't describe it in words, but you know it because you experience it. Even in my loneliness, I, I can tell you there's this love and this peace and joy and comfort that's filling me. And I know that's Jesus wrapping his arms around me. And I know he's telling me it's okay. <clears throat> it's okay you feel lonely. I'm here with you. I will never leave. I will never forsake you. He's my God. Anyway. Yeah. Luke 11, 49. Let's look at it one more time. Luke 11, 49. I'm absolutely madly in love with him. Absolutely madly in love with him. Okay. Luke 11, 49. <clears throat> that is, now pay attention here. Luke 11, 49. Pay attention here. That is why the wisdom of God also said, guys, who's speaking here in this verse? That is why the wisdom of God also said, I will send prophets and apostles to them. And they will kill and persecute some of them. <clears throat> I think that's the whole entire verse, right? Post it one more time, Protestant. Luke eleven forty nine. Watch here. Sorry, it's buffering. Sorry, buffering. Sorry. Luke eleven forty nine. No, 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 no. You guys are not paying attention. So you're not paying attention. Pay attention. Read. That is why the wisdom of God also said, who's speaking? The wisdom of God also said, I will send prophets and apostles to them, and they will kill and persecute some of them. Who's speaking? Who said, I will send prophets and apostles here? But see if you let's see if you catch it. See, you guys are not catching it. You're killing me. Oh, boy. Wow. <laughs> Talk about Christians today not paying attention. My goodness. Father Jehovah. And now I'm going to cry for a different reason. I'm going to cry for a different reason. I'll give every one of you $10 million if you show me Jesus Christ is the one who said those words. Okay. Let's quote it one more time. Let's see if we get it. Lord. This time I'm going to cry for a different reason. Okay. Luke one, uh, Luke 11, 49. Nate and Pagrian got it. Okay. Lisa, I'm going to commit homicide. I'm going to shoot myself and call it homicide. Luke 11, 49, not I got it. That is why the wisdom of God also said, the wisdom of God also said, the wisdom of God also said. See, I'm going to repeat it 10 times. The wisdom of God also said, the wisdom of God also said. Luke 11, 49, post it one more time. Let's let's go to one more time. That is why the wisdom of God also said, I will send prophets and apostles to them and they will kill and persecute some of them. Guys, did you catch it? Who is the one saying, I will send prophets and apostles that the Jews will kill? I will send prophets and apostles that the Jews will kill. Growing, you're killing me, sister. You're killing me. If you don't get it this time, I'm going to shut down the live stream. Who just said, Jade, 
I'm going to block you for that. Jade, I'm going to end up blocking you. Ron, you guys are on my list. You're going to get blocked right now. Who just said, I will send prophets and apostles? Luke 11, 49. Let's try it again. Wake me up when you get it. Let's post it again. My goodness. Post it one more time, buddy. David, Laurel, you know you got to go, right? You got to leave. You got to leave now. That is why the wisdom of God also said, the wisdom of man, I can't believe it. I even repeat it. And you guys can't get it. The wisdom of God also said, the wisdom of God also said, the wisdom of God also said, growing sister, you just got done praising me. Why do you want me to block you? Where does it say pre-incarnate word? Where does it say the word? Why are you adding to the text? Let's try this again. For the love of our triumph God, for the love of Jesus. Why you guys have a hard time reading what's in front of you? If I bring a blind man, a blind man. Oh, yeah, 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 I see. What is wrong with you guys that you can't see what's in front of you? It's right there. Hello. You're going to kill me, man. I feel like Rain Man. My grandma and your grandma. Can we try it again? See, this is why I can't finish any session in this lifetime. There is no way I'll finish any session in this lifetime. I'm like Rain Man, you know? Dustin Hoffman. Ah! Ah! Okay. Luke 11, 49. Let's try it again. No, David, we didn't agree. Just go with the text, man. David, Luke 11, 49. That is why the wisdom of God also said, I will send prophets and apostles to them, and they will kill and perse persecute some of them. Final shot to get it. Who said... I will send prophets and apostles that the Jews will kill. Who said it? Who said it? All right. The wisdom of God. See, okay, go Gicha. Okay, bye-bye, go Gicha. Hold on. Let me send go Gicha bye. Hold on, I got to send her bye. Side, bye-bye, go Gicha. See ya. My grandma and your grandma juggling on the fire. Okay, did everyone else get it? Vine, brother, Vine. You know it's going to murder me. I can't block you, bro. I'm being partial now. Vine, I will become a monk and join your monastery if you show me the Holy Spirit, Vine. Okay. All right. Everyone got it? The wisdom of God? Did you see... The wisdom of God said, I will send you prophets and apostles. Do you see that? Jesus said, the wisdom of God said, Jesus is quoting the wisdom of God. Hey, the wisdom of God said, I will send prophets and apostles and you will kill them. Did you get it that it's the wisdom of God speaking? Did you get it? The wisdom of God is speaking. Okay. Don't tell me Jesus because someone's going to tell you, prove to me it's Jesus. And you can't prove to that person it's Jesus by going to Paul. Do you know why? They'll tell you that's Paul. That's not Luke. That's Paul. That's not, you get what I'm saying? You can't quote to me Paul who said Jesus is the wisdom of God to show that here, when the wisdom of God says this, it's Jesus saying it. You get my point? So, who said, I will send prophets and apostles and you'll kill them? The wisdom of God, Luke eleven forty nine. 49. The wisdom of God. Did everyone get it? Everyone got it? That's why people watch me and say, man, what a jerk this guy is. I who? How can people actually listen to him? Guys, I'm tired. I'm sorry. I'm tired of the fact that we have been dumbed down. I'm tired of the fact that pastors have not educated the flock. These shepherds, shame on them. The Lord rebuked them severely. 
because we have a bunch of Christians who don't know their scriptures and can't read for the life of them. Okay. Did everyone see the wisdom of God is saying, I, wisdom of God, will send you apostles and prophets whom you'll kill. Did you get that? Can you put a one if you got it? Okay. Now go in Luke 11, 49. Sorry, I gave you the wrong link. Okay, here you go. When you go to Luke 11, 49, here's the link. Click there. And it says, He Sophia to Theu. He Sophia to Theu. Notice that even the article the, it's feminine in Greek. The word e or he, if you want to pronounce it with the breathing sound. He, Sophia, it's feminine because Sophia is feminine. It's a feminine noun. So the definite article before it has to be in the feminine gender as well. He, Sophia, to Theu, the wisdom of God, of the God. Everyone got it? Yeah, meaning that I make, uh, that Christian Prince makes me look mild. Christian Prince makes me look like I'm a choir boy. Okay, did you click on the link? Do you see that the word wisdom is Sophia? I know growing, but you can't assume it growing. Sister, to tell me it's Jesus, you're assuming it. I want you to prove it from Luke that the wisdom of God speaking is Jesus. So don't assume your tradition. You need to prove it. All right. Did everyone see there? It's the wisdom of God speaking and the words... The words in Greek, the words in Greek are he Sophia, he Sophia, which is feminine in gender. He is the feminine form of the definite article. And Sophia, Sophia is feminine noun. Do you see it, guys? Do you catch it there? You caught it? I, I, please tell me you're seeing it there. It's because even if you look at the bottom, I'll tell you F. The F is means feminine. He is the feminine form of the definite article in Greek. And Sophia is a feminine noun. So notice Sophia is feminine. So if I'm going to personify Sophia, if I'm going to treat Sophia as a person and I want to personify it, does it make sense that I describe Sophia as a male or a female? And even in Hebrew, the word wisdom in Hebrew, hokma, that too is feminine. So it makes sense. It makes sense to describe wisdom as in Greek. The Greek word for, for wisdom is feminine. Sophia is a feminine noun. So if I want to personify wisdom, if I want to speak of wisdom as a person, Seeing that the gender is female in Hebrew and Greek, it only makes sense that I describe wisdom as a woman. No, growing. They'll tell you logos is not the same as Sophia. Again, you're assuming the tradition of the church fathers that identified logos, logos, with Sophia because to them, Jesus was the wisdom and word of God. See, again... Growing, you are assuming your tradition because John doesn't call Jesus Sophia. He doesn't say in the beginning was Sophia. In the beginning was Logos, Ho Logos, Halagos, and it's not the same. For everyone else, did you get it? Now, do you want me to show you how you can show that the wisdom of God that said, the wisdom of God that said, I will send you prophets and apostles is Jesus. You want me to show you how you can do that? Not by going to Paul, by sticking with Jesus. By the way, if the wisdom of God sends prophets and apostles, and we know according to the Old Testament, it is God who sends prophets and apostles. Isn't this proof that wisdom is claiming to be a divine being? God sends prophets and apostles. Wisdom says, I send prophets and apostles. That means the wisdom of God, like God, is divine. Right? Are you getting this or no? 
Let me repeat it again. Luke eleven forty nine. 49. The wisdom of God said, I, wisdom, will send prophets and apostles. But hold on. It is God who sends prophets and apostles. Yes. But you're saying, you, wisdom, saying you send prophets and apostles. Yeah. But you're distinct from God, right? Yeah. I belong to God. I'm his wisdom. But at the same time, though I'm distinct from God, I'm one with him. Therefore, I can do what God does. Wow. So God and his wisdom are both divine. Akrinos. Right? Tell me you guys are not being blown away with this. Okay. Here's how you prove Jesus claimed to be that wisdom of God. Jesus claimed to be that wisdom of God. Are you ready for the proof? So you have more proof that Jesus is distinct from God, but one with God, one in essence with God. But I need you to pay attention. Please don't make it another 20-minute session. Please. Oh, please. I'm tired. I love you guys, but I'm tired, man. I swear I am. Please. Please get it. Please get it. Please, man. Please. I'm crying from pain. All right. Luke 11.49, back to back. Vine, we're almost done. Don't go anywhere. Luke 11.49, back to back with Matthew 23.34. No, Andrew, I'm almost done anyway. Luke 11.49, back to back with Matthew 23.34. This is how you prove Jesus was claiming to be the wisdom of God, but speaking in such a way where he veiled it. He was veiling it because he knew the Jews wouldn't accept what he's about to say. Luke 11, 49, Matthew 23, 34, back to back. Let's see who got it. That is why the wisdom of God said, I will send prophets and apostles to them and they will kill and persecute some of them. Now notice what Jesus says in Matthew 23, 34. For this reason, I am sending to you prophets and wise men and public instructors, some of whom you will kill and execute on stakes. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Back it up. Jesus, hold on. Earlier in your ministry, you said, the wisdom of God said, I will send prophets and apostles that the Jews will kill. Later on, that last week before you're crucified, you come out and said, I am sending you prophets and wise men and public instructors that the Jews will kill and execute and throw out of the synagogues. Wait, 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 Jesus. Hold on. How is it early in your ministry, you said the wisdom of God said he's going to do this or she's going to do this. But then later on, you claim to do what the wisdom of God said she will do. Did you catch it? This is how you show that Jesus is claiming to be the wisdom of God. So why did he just come out and say he's the wisdom? Because he's speaking of it in a veiled way. To hide it from the Jews who are opposing him. But later on he comes out and says it. If you remembered his words. See if you remember what he said early on. Uh, Jesus. Yes. Early in your ministry you said. You quoted the wisdom of God. You said the wisdom of God said. I wisdom will send you prophets and apostles. Whom you will persecute and kill. Well, now you're saying. You're the one who's going to do it. I, Jesus, will send you prophets and wise men and scribes. Some you'll persecute, some you'll torture, some you'll throw out your synagogues. So, uh, Jesus, are you telling me you do what the wisdom of God said she will do? Yeah. So are you telling me that you're the wisdom of God? Yes. So you're telling me that the wisdom of God is not really a woman. Though the word wisdom is feminine, the wisdom of God is actually a male person. You, the son of God. Exactly. Wisdom of God speaks. And the wisdom of God says, I will send you prophets and apostles. Jesus then says, I will send you prophets, wise men and scribes. 
wait, Jesus, are you claiming to be wisdom? Yes. So it wasn't personification here. You are not simply personifying wisdom. You are actually describing an actual divine person, that wisdom is an actual divine person, distinct from God, one with God. Yes. And that wisdom is not a female, though the word is feminine. It's not a female. It's a male person, namely you. Yes. I am the wisdom of God, the son of God, the word of God, one with God. I am all that God is that became flesh. No wonder Paul said you're the wisdom of God, Jesus. Did it sink in? Sink in or no? Okay, but wait, let me, let me, let's, let's, because I don't have to, then I'm going to have to do a part two. I'm going to do a part two tomorrow on firstborn. We didn't finish yet. Remember, wisdom of God said, I will send you prophets and apostles. According to the Old Testament, God and only God sends prophets and apostles. Therefore, the wisdom of God, though distinct from God, must also be God. But then notice what Jesus said in Matthew 23, 34, one more time. Matthew 23, 34, one more time. Let's post it again. Let's post it again. Watch here. Matthew 23, 34, post it again. Notice what Jesus says before the rapture, Protestant. Don't leave us behind. Pay attention. For this reason, I... Jesus is speaking. I, Jesus, am sending you prophets and wise men and public instructors. Uh, Jesus, yes. According to the Old Testament, God and only God sends prophets. So why are you saying that you, you personally, you, Jesus, will send prophets, wise men, and public instructors? Who do you think you are? And by the way, this is the Jehovah's Witness translation. Who do you think you are? How can you say... You, Jesus, will be sending prophets and wise men and scribes when, according to the Old Testament, only Jehovah and Jehovah God alone sends prophets, apostles, and wise men. Who do you think you are? Hmm, let, let's think about that. Uh, God? Oh, really? <whistles> Guys, you see how much meat there is? How much irrefutable proof there is? from the scriptures that the one true God is triune, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and that Jesus Christ is Jehovah God Almighty, the eternal uncreated wisdom, the eternal uncreated wisdom, word, Son of the Father that became flesh. Do you see how much irrefutable proof and meet how much irrefutable proof and meat there is in the scriptures that the one true God is triune, Father, Son, and Spirit, and that Jesus Christ is the eternal, uncreated word, wisdom, Son of the Father, the eternal, uncreated word, wisdom, Son of the Father, who became flesh. How much irrefutable proof there is? God is triune, and Jesus is the uncreated, eternal word, wisdom, <clears throat> Son of the Father. Okay, let me show you a final thing, and we're going to end it. You ready? Who pours out the Holy Spirit? Joel chapter 2, verses 27 to 28. Joel chapter 2, verses 27 to 28. Pay attention. Who pours out the Holy Spirit? And we got to finish it today, right, right after this. Joel. J-O-E-L, Joel, not job, man. Get a job, Protestant. Joel. Joel, chapter 2, verses 27, 28. Watch here. And you will know, you will have to know that I am the midst of Israel and that I am Jehovah your God. There is no other. My people will never get again be put to shame. After that, I will pour out my spirit on every sort of flesh. Jehovah speaking. Joe says, I will pour out my spirit on every sort of flesh. And he says it again in 29. 
So post 29 as well. And your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. So I, Jehovah, will pour out my spirit. 29. And even on my male slaves and female slaves, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So Jehovah God pours out his spirit. My spirit I will pour out. Okay, but wait. Go to Proverbs 1, 20 to 23. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 20 to 23. Pay attention here. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 20 to 23. True wisdom cries aloud in the street. It keeps raising its voice in the public squares. So wisdom is speaking. At the corner of the busy streets, it calls out. At the entrances of the city gates, it says. So wisdom is speaking. What does wisdom say? How long will you inexperienced ones love inexperience? How long will you ridiculers take pleasure in ridicule? And how long will you foolish ones hate knowledge? Respond to my reproof. Then I will pour out my spirit for you. Wait, 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 wait. Here in Proverbs 1, the, the wisdom of God says, I, wisdom, will pour out my spirit on you. Okay, I'm confused. Is it Jehovah's spirit that Jehovah pours out? Or is it wisdom spirit that wisdom pours out? Guys, who's pouring out the spirit? And the spirit belongs to who? In Joel 2, 27, 29, it's Jehovah's spirit that Jehovah pours out. In Proverbs 1, 20 to 23, wisdom is speaking, and wisdom says, I will pour out my spirit for you. What's going on? Guys, what's going on? Who's pouring out the spirit? Come on, help me. Got to finish. Who's pouring out the spirit? Who's pouring out the spirit? Jehovah said, I will pour out my spirit. Wisdom says, I will pour out my spirit. Jehovah and the spirit. The spirit belongs to Jehovah and wisdom. I'm sorry. Jehovah says, I will pour out my spirit. Wisdom says, I will pour out my spirit. Jehovah and wisdom pour out the spirit. The spirit belongs to Jehovah and Jehovah's wisdom. Wisdom says it's my spirit. Jehovah says it's my spirit. So the spirit belongs to Jehovah and Jehovah's wisdom. And Jehovah and Jehovah's wisdom together pour out the spirit. <whistles> oh, but wait. Let's end it with Acts 2. Acts 2, 30 to 33. Acts 2, 30 to 33. Acts 2, 30 to 33. Because he was a prophet, David was a prophet, David was a prophet and knew that God had sworn on him with an oath that he would seat one of his offspring on his throne. He, David, foresaw, saw in advance, and he, David, spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he forsaken in the grave, nor did his flesh see corruption. God resurrected this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Therefore, because he was exalted, Jesus exalted to the right hand of God, and receive the promised Holy Spirit from the Father, he, Jesus, has poured out what you see in here. Wow. Peter said, God raised Jesus to heaven. God exalted Jesus to heaven. And Jesus in heaven took the Spirit from the Father, and Jesus poured out the Spirit upon us that you hear and see. Help me, I'm very tired. Joel 2, 27, 29, Jehovah says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Proverbs 1, 20, 23, the wisdom of God says, I, wisdom, will pour out my spirit for you. Acts 2, 30 to 33, Jesus went to heaven, took the spirit from the Father, and Jesus poured out the spirit upon his servants in fulfillment of Joel. Guys, I'm confused. Does Jehovah pour out his spirit? Or is it wisdom that pours out her spirit? Or is it the son, the son, Jesus, the son, pouring out the spirit from the father? Or is it all of the above? So Jehovah's spirit is wisdom's spirit, is Jesus' spirit. Because Jesus is wisdom, 
distinct from Jehovah, yet one with him. Now you see why we're Trinitarian? Do you see why we're Trinitarian? Because Jesus is the uncreated eternal wisdom, word, son of the Father, the uncreated angel of the Father that became flesh, who's one with the Father, and that the Father's Spirit, the Holy Spirit belongs to him because they're the one God. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is Jehovah to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord willing, tomorrow I'm going to do part two. I still haven't gotten around to explain what firstborn means. You need to re-listen to this session. Hear it over and over again until it becomes second nature. Use this information. Pass it to others. Download the session and all sessions so that more people can learn the truth by the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can know the word more perfectly, live it out more, more powerfully, and love the true God, who's Father, Son, Holy Spirit, more passionately. Lord Jesus, wash us in your blood. Wash my daughters in your blood. Provide for us and seal us for your glory. Lord Jesus, come sooner than later. We love you, risen Lord of glory. Amen, amen, amen. Take care. Christ is risen, risen indeed.